Ansela, I'm from Tafwa, and I love to listen to today FM, today FM Rocks. My name is Freddy, I'm uh, from Gamiaton, I listen to Mario on the traffic jam every afternoon. Hi, my name is Sala, I live in Asinu, today FM Rocks. My name is Denasa and I'm from Lutoka and I love listening to Today FM. My name is Mulonila, I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Today FM, it rocks in Raki Raki. I'm Mary from Mandera. I love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. We love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. This is FBC News. I'm Jackie Spade. Coming up, Air Terminal Services works on improving handling and in-flight services at the Nandi International Airport. Thirteen companies have shown interest in buying government shares in Fiji Electricity Authority. An elections office works on bettering people engagement. A new work culture is being introduced at Air Terminal Services, which provides ground handling and in-flight services at the Nandi International Airport. ATS Board Chair Riyaz Said Kayum says the company needs to change with the times. Air Terminal Services is responsible for your baggage, meals on flights, check-ins at the airport and freight. Its performance lately hasn't been up to par. There seems to be sometimes a, a certain degree of malaise, uh, a, a certain comfort with the mediocrity that we'll just come to work and we'll do what we have to do, but we won't put in the extra effort. I'm not saying everyone uh, thinks that way, but certainly there are some people who do uh, think like that. And we are trying to impress upon the, uh, the unions who are representatives of the workers on the board to tell them that this, this cannot sort of go on any longer. We need to change. Said Kayum has spoken openly about some of the things that were happening at ATS, which includes isolated incidents of pilfering and airline meals not being up to standard. Fiji Airways is ATS's biggest customer, and part of the new culture means making things right with the national airline. In May this year, a ground handling staff of ATS caused damage to one of the new Airbus A330 worth millions of dollars. There have been instances of carelessness. I mean, look at the, the accident issue. It shouldn't have happened. It happened on our watch. Now, we can argue uh, till the cows come home uh, about what exactly happened and uh, what led to the damage. But the fact is, it happened under the watch of ATS, and we have to take responsibility for it. So there's some other issues, too, which our biggest customer, uh, Fiji Airways, has um, um, uh, addressed this with us. In the end, we partners, because they, we their major customer, they are a major supplier, and it's important for us to work closely together so that we get the standard we want and they have a happy customer. Sayed Kayum says the company, which is a monopoly, needs to become efficient, improve delivery and increase output. The reform, a modern approach to business, is being channeled from the board down to every worker. ATS can do much, much better, and we can perform much better, we can earn more revenue uh, if we get things right. And if we get that extra revenue, we make more income, we make more profits, it is the workers that, is going to, that are going to ultimately benefit. The improvements that Sayed Kayum is talking about will need workers' cooperation at every level because they are part owners of air terminal services. Edwin Nand, FBC News. Thirteen companies have shown interest in buying government shares in Fiji Electricity Authority. This was revealed by Acting Prime Minister Aya Said Kayum during the 1.2 million bonus payout announcement yesterday. Shireen Lata reports. In the next few months, the government will meet the 13 companies who have showed interest in buying the government shares in the Fiji Electricity Authority. Acting Prime Minister Aya Said Kayum says interviews will be done with the companies to find out about their proposals and plans. It's about getting the right efficiencies in. It's about ensuring that we get the right partnerships in, we get people to put in money to be able to get the company to move on to the next stage. Sayed Kayum says one of the reasons government is interested in divesting some of its shares is because FEA loans are guaranteed by the state, which is over $350 million. The level of loans that when you go out and borrow from you know, ANZ or you borrow from China Development Bank, 
they want government to guarantee that in the event that you default to pay, we will step in and pay. The acting Prime Minister has also assured the staff of the FEA that they will not be losing their jobs due to these changes. Sharin Lata, FBC News. The Fijian Elections Office is currently installing a Geographic Information System, or GIS, to prevent anomalies in future elections. Supervisor of Elections Mohamed Sanim says this upgrade will help in his office to do their work more effectively and accurately. Savaira Tambua has more. The Elections Office has begun preparing for the 2018 general elections. Supervisor of Elections Mohamed Sanim says the new system has been put in place for the benefit of the voters. We will be using this data to make some changes to uh, the voter registrations so that people are able to go and vote um, at the right polling station and uh, it prevents uh, anomalies uh, where husbands and wife were split up into different polling places because the manner in which they provided their address was not uh, correct. Sanim says in the future people will also be able to use Google Map to find their polling station. We'll hopefully get uh, correct, uh, much more accurate uh, photos and uh, street addressing uh, in Fiji through Google Maps. So I'm very much interested in this project uh, taking off, hitting uh, the, the peak and uh, delivering to us a proper map with all the electoral uh, polling stations uh, marked. The elections office anticipates to complete the project by end of next year so that people get ready and adapted to the new system before the next general elections in 2018. Sabira Tamboa, FBC News. Traders found ripping off customers during the Christmas season can be fined up to $20,000. The Consumer Council of Fiji conducted a survey and found traders advertising their goods as special, but they're charging customers higher than usual prices. Shriti Prasad has more. With crazy sales and promotions underway in the build-up to Christmas, customers need to be vigilant. The Policing Body Commerce Commission will be on the move to find cheating traders and issue spot fines from $100 to $3,000. If they can't pay within 21 days, the penalty raises to a possible $20,000 or imprisonment. Consumer Council of Fiji's Chief Executive Officer Premla Kumar says it's also the trader's responsibility to inform the customers on the prices. Price that is displayed on the product or on the shelf do not match when consumers are at the checkout counters or at the caches. They are two different prices. And this is a common occurrence. Kumar says the consumers have the rights to report the matter. We spoke to some of the customers who said it is frustrating to go back to the shops to get refunds. Sometimes in the store, they, in the shop, they put different prices when come to the Kesha. They give us different prices and it's really frustrating. This has to be stopped. From 1st December 2015, the Fiji Commerce Commission is empowered to impose spot fines on traders not displaying prices for non-price control items and not issuing invoices, receipts with particulars. Shriti Prasad, FBC News. Acting Prime Minister Ayo Said Kayyum has called on businesses to have the right attitude when dealing with the New Companies Act 2015. He made the statement while speaking at the symposium on the Companies Act. Ali Kimbia has more. The New Companies Act will come into effect as of 1st January next year. And Acting Prime Minister Ayo Said Kayyum has urged companies to be open-minded about the new laws in place. The overall... Um rationale behind modernizing these laws is of course not for the sake of modernizing them but to ensure that it does capture as I said contemporary changes in society and also to ensure that the ease of doing business uh, becomes a lot more easier. Sayed Kayyum says getting feedback from companies is critical as there is still room for improvement. Of course we can already see um, how uh, many provisions uh, can be improved and of course the improvements can come by way of the regulations themselves. Um, but, you know, um, we've been having discussions in fact, the past couple of days with, uh, with the Minters too about it and how some of the areas can be improved. Sir Kayum also confirms that the work on the draft regulations is currently ongoing and it is expected to be completed in the coming weeks. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Coming up on FBC News, police sends out strong message for school holidays. Maenil 
बेकरी मदर्स क्लब की रोहिणी कुमार हूँ और रेडियो फिजी टू की मैं बड़ी दीवानी हूँ मेरा नाम राम है मैं लटोका में रहता हूँ और जस्ती करके मैं रेडियो फिजी टू सुन रहा हूँ हाय मैं हूँ आईना नावा टाउन से नावा में रेडियो फिजी टू सबकी पसंद मेरा नाम अश्विन है मैं रेगरी में का व्यापार करता हूँ और ज़्यादातर हम लोग रेगरी में रेडियो फिजी टू सुनते हैं हमारा नाम रोशनी है मैं तावा टाउन से बात कर रही हूँ मुझे रेडियो फिजी बहुत पसंद है रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन Welcome back. This is FBC News. The 2015 school year has come to an end and students are being advised to stay safe these holidays. The Fiji police force has beefed up its operations and manpower to help keep the students and others safe. Akusi Tatale has more. As the country gears up for the busy festive season, school children will also be using this break to enjoy time with family and friends. Students have been urged to be responsible and stay safe. as the recent rise in drowning among children is a major concern we will be moving around uh, our police officers uh, especially in uh, picnic spots and um, areas where normally frequented by the members of the community and uh, we hope that uh, this will be the end of it as we go towards the end of the year as in the past police will also keep close tabs on youngsters wanting to enter night clubs It's also our joint uh, effort with uh, nightclub owners and um, security at the nightclubs. They they know they are aware of it and they are assisting uh, us from uh, uh, checking um, juveniles that are normally go into uh, the nightclubs uh, uh, even though they are under age. Parents and guardians have been warned to take responsibility and monitor the whereabouts of their children. Dundravu stresses that parental negligence and ignorance. will be seriously looked into akosita tali fbc news and still on the festive season holidays we now cross live to akosita tali who joins us at the capital's mysuva park akosita trade and tourism minister fayas koya will launch vodafone's biggest and most unique christmas in the park celebrations tell us more about it <laughs> Good evening Jackie Vodafone has been hosting Christmas in the park celebrations for the past years however this year will be a different one and joining us this evening is Vodafone Fiji CEO Mr Pradeep Lal Mr Lal good evening thank you for having us this evening now tell us what's so significant about uh, this year's celebration Bula vinaka and uh, good good evening to all uh, FBC viewers Fiji wide uh, Vodafone Fiji uh, this year is launching Christmas on the park it's going to be very unique uh, maybe possibly seen first time in fiji you will see a lot of uh, christmas lights uh, variety of lights there'll be live bands music lot of fun activities uh, later tonight we'll also have fireworks display and we have also made arrangement for people to have free transport coming from uh, suva city uh, to Uh, my suva park so there there will be lot of activities happening there there will also be father christmas and there will be gifts for lot of kids so please do come down and have a great evening there you had it lots of entertainment uh, uh, this evening right here at my suva park and you can also join us at 8 pm tonight for the lighting of the 15 meter christmas tree right here on fbc tv jackie looking forward to it thanks so much for that ako With an increase in urbanization it has become necessary to urgently make a concerted effort to protect the world's resources keeping this in mind experts from international regional and national organizations are meeting in Suva to discuss the Pacific World Heritage Action Plan for 2016 to 2020 Ritika Pratap reports These experts are discussing the Pacific World Heritage Action Plan for 2016 to 2020, the second to be designed following on the 2010 to 2015 Action Plan. A special occasion offers an opportunity to discuss about the diversity of our cultural heritage and the efforts that are required to protect and conserve it, as well as to draw attention to its vulnerability. 12 Pacific Island countries have ratified or acceded to the World Heritage Convention, nine of whom have submitted tentative lists, and seven properties from the Pacific Islands to be on the World Heritage List. To the IT revolution, we should not ignore the advantage and the reach of IT-based uh, tools 
to assist us in this work that we're doing. And I do hope that your plan will include that. Reddy says we need to transform heritage conservation from the grassroots level. To have these kinds of movements, we need to start from our school system, where we are in custody of these minds who are hungry for knowledge. From the age of 5 to 18, these young minds will take on or absorb any information that we give. The four-day meeting ends on Friday. The government has allocated $408,000 for the upgrade of the World Heritage Structures in Levuka in the 2016 budget. Ritika Pratap, FPC News. Former president and staunch advocate in the fight against HIV and AIDS, former president Ratu Epeli Nailatikau, has been appointed the United Nations Regional Goodwill Ambassador for the Pacific. Ratu Epeli's appointment was formalized last night at the culmination of World AIDS Day. After accepting the honor, Ratu Epeli said the fight against HIV and AIDS must be fought on all fronts with every option for awareness exploited. HIV AIDS is a multifaceted thing and you've got to have a multifaceted approach and reply. You can't just concentrate on one thing. Eventually, I always list from family values to begin with and go through using abstinence down practicing safe sex, the use of condoms. The theme this year for World AIDS Day is focused on zero AIDS-related deaths, zero new infections and zero discrimination. Amazed by her local fans at the Nandi International Airport, Usha Nadkarni, famously known by her stage name Savita Thai, is ready to entertain Fiji. The actress arrived in the country today. Josephine Navula has the details. The 69-year-old actress was swamped by her local followers that rushed to the venue to get a closer glimpse of her. Known for her wicked and cunning act on the TV series Pavita Rishta that airs from Monday to Thursday on FBC TV, Usha Nadkarni was stunned at the reception she received in Nandi today. I'm stunned to see the way I was welcomed. Thank you, Fiji. Thank you, Fiji. Promoter Sid Sahid says they have been getting positive feedbacks from the past few weeks. The hype of Savitata is quite extreme and it's quite exciting to see that the, the crowd of Fiji is backing this show up. Uh, exciting these day parties that we hear at the airport picking her up, uh, including uh, Vishwajit and Chirag. So we're almost ready to go. The show will allow Fijians to get close and personal with the TV star. She'll be doing exactly the same thing what she's been doing on the show. Um, you know, she'll be creating a bit of a drama uh, on the stage uh, with the comedian Chirag, uh, and she'll be doing a bit of a performance with uh, Vishwajit as well. And uh, what she's told us is that she will be interacting with the, with the audience uh, as well. She will feature alongside Love India's Love Chirag Wadwani and Saregama Pa singer Vishwad Bawankar. Josephine Navula, FBC News. Sports Now, here's Jamie with the latest. Thank you, Jackie, and good evening in sports tonight. Fiji's sevens teams ready for opening leg of World Series. And Fiji under-20 rugby side one game away from qualifying for Junior World Trophy. These stories and more after the break. Bula FM number 2 and ser. The Vodafone Fiji 7 side is ready to test how much is gathered from a long off-season program when the Dubai 7s gets underway this weekend. The World Series defending champions have already played two scrimmage sessions this week against the Abu Dhabi Harlequins and USA and are now ready to hit the ground running at the opening leg of the World Series. We're basically, with some months of pre-season training we've had, we're 
we've built ourselves up a little bit from there to carry us on it. Eh? So, you know, each time we go out, we go out to try and win the tournament. So that's the, the aim that we have. Fiji will take on Canada in the opening match of the Dubai Sevens tournament at 6 p.m. on Friday. And you can watch the entire tournament live on FPC TV. Meanwhile, tomorrow the Women's World Seven Series also gets underway in Dubai. The Telecom Fijianas will be banking on its improved fitness and an impressive Oceania Sevens outing to try and match its higher ranked opponents. We'll be more aggressive on because we still want to stick on our on our um, World Series for us to get into the quarterfinal. The Fijiana side will take on Canada in its first match in the Dubai Sevens at 9.20 tomorrow evening. It rained tries at Bidesi Park yesterday as the Vodafone Fiji under-20 side demolished Vanuatu 109 points to 6 in the Oceania Rugby Junior Trophy. The national side now only needs either a win or a draw against Tonga on Saturday to qualify for the Junior World Trophy that will be played in, in Zimbabwe next year. Salin Daudakadaka reports. <laughs> The Fiji under-20 side proved yesterday why they deserve to join Samoa in the Junior World Trophy next year after running in 16 tries against Vanuatu. The team was in devastating form, brushing aside weak tackles to score some scintillating tries. Uh, the boys uh, just uh, work on our weaknesses from last week. And uh, we, we, went, uh, we went back to camp and uh, did our review and saw our weaknesses and just work on, work on our weaknesses. For Fiji will not be taking any chances in the deciding match against Tonga after the junior Ikali Tahe side won its second match against Papua New Guinea, 55-16. We have to go back uh, and we need to tighten up on a little bit on our set pieces and also on uh, something that we, we had uh, worked out on the unpredictability of some of the opponents that we're facing during this tournament. Pacific rivalry will be at its best when the two unbeaten teams clash on Saturday with the hope of claiming a JWT spot. Silent the Kazaka, FBC Sports. The Fiji Chess Federation completed its national championships at Fasanok House in Suba today. University of the South Pacific student Hilda Vuki Komala took out the women's category, while Manoj Kumar won the open category. This is Kumar's ninth national title, and he says Fiji's younger players are progressing well in the sport. This, these guys are developing very rapidly. Uh, all they need, these young players, is a bit more coaching. Uh, and from their own side, they need to work hard on chess. Uh, practice a lot, uh, play the online games, and re read uh, probably a lot of practical games with a lot of uh, theoretical part too. So uh, a combination of everything. This was the Federation's last event of the year. Local boxer Johnny Singh is ready to take his boxing career to another level when he faces Ronald Naidu at the Wild West Boxing Promotion next weekend. Singh has been training hard for the fight and is raring to get into the ring. Josephine Avula has the details. Nicknamed the machine gun, Johnny Singh has been working tirelessly to get in shape for the match up in the Wild West Boxing Promotion. Speaking on his behalf, his trainer Fayaz Ali says... Singh is raring to go for the fight. We have been training for the last uh, two to three months. And uh, I would like to request the people of Nandi and the boxing fans around the country to come over and support uh, this boxing promotion because Johnny Singh is coming up and is probably going to be the next uh, champion in his weight division. The 30-year-old made his debut in 2011 with a win over Waisile Ratu. And Ali guarantees they won't disappoint the boxing fans. Blood. Knockouts, fireworks, because I think uh, the, our promoter has done a very good, very sharp job. He's a very smart boxing promoter because both kids are from Nani. Both have their fans, so I'm requesting both fans to get, come together. While West boxing promoter Abdul Khan says he has been working around the clock to bring the best boxes in the country for the battle. When uh, 2012, I had done the program with Joseph Kajo with uh, Joe Ali. This was the um, first the biggest program uh, was in Fiji. After that, this is the second biggest pro uh, program which uh, Napoleon is fighting with uh, Petro Gida. And pe uh, people are awaiting this fight from three years. The fight between Johnny Singh and Ronald Naidu will be held at the Prince Charles Park in Nandi. Meanwhile, the heavyweight title will be a battle between Peter Rongida and Napoleon Taumoy Pius. Josephine Novula, 
FBC Sports. The 2015 Rooster National Club Championship Finals is turning out to become a very closely contested one. Looking at the results from the playoff rounds, it's very hard to pick any standout team with defending champion Civic FC of Suva, last year's losing finalist Nandi's Namaka FC and Bar's 4 Electrical all displaying very good football last weekend. The organizers are predicting a close finish this Sunday. A uh, few teams have performed uh, gallantly in first week of playoff and uh, uh, teams like Civic, uh, Lukia United, they've, they've played a marvelous game in first round and, and uh, even uh, Namaka FC and 4, uh, four Electrical from Bar. And they stand good chance to win the Rusta National Club Championship 2015. The NCC finals begin at Bas Govind Park on Friday. That is your sports for tonight. Good evening. <laughs>